back to the Con Guy podcast here, as always, on that hashtag show network. We are doing our 2020 Shark Week celebration. And as always, anything here on that hashtag show is brought to you by Nep Vodka, reminding you to please drink responsibly. My name is Ben Kleber. That's right, old buddy Ben. And joining me today is the Con Guy himself, Jim Fry, and the world's most finest rice cake, Cheeseman. Jim Cheese, how are you doing today? So good to be here. Exciting. Yeah. I'm glad to talk to you talking to today. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I was out on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, uh, 2020 may have shut everything down, but sharks can't catch COVID-19. So Shark Week still reigns supreme as it has for over 30 years. This week, the Kong guy is celebrating the granddaddy of them all, Jaws, which was released June 20th, 1975, altering our trips to the beach forever. Uh, to help us celebrate this milestone today, 45 years of John, of John uh, we are honored to be joined by John the second, although I think technically third, if you count the dog, uh, okay. the second victim, the second human victim of Bruce the Shark in Jaws, coming to us from the filming location at Martha's Vineyard, the Kintner boy himself, Alex Kintner, actor Jeffrey Voorhees, welcome to the Con Guy podcast, Jeff. How's it going there? So this is our, well, 45th anniversary. This is the dead Alex Kinder, I guess. Uh, it's funny, I still live on Martha's Vineyard here. I'm down on the beach, it's a little windy. I run some dogs down on the beach where I was eating back, oh, back in the 70s. I was 12 years old, so 45 years ago is when I died. And this is the beach right here where, you know, they were filming a movie down here, just moved up from Connecticut, and they, they were going to be filming a movie, Jaws, and they needed extras. We were just little kids, lived right in town, Eggertown down here, and they said they needed a bunch of people to be in the movie. They're going to give me 40 bucks a day to do it, so we all signed up, and after signing up, they called a few people back, said, read a line. So they give you a couple lines, you read it, it's like, okay, you got a speaking part, and so you get 140 a day. So me, the, the sheriff's oldest son, I was friends with him. He got a speaking part. And uh, his, his name was Chris Abello. But this is, that's when I said, okay, we'll start filming. And it's a small little island, so it's fun. So the, the funny part is everyone would say, were you afraid of the shark? No, they filmed this in May and up here in New England off the coast of Massachusetts. You don't go swimming here until like July. This water is cold in May, so everyone's, mm. were you afraid of the shark? No, I was afraid of freezing my you-know-what off, but so anyway, they, when they were starting the movie, they, they they have little scenes, and basically, if you look way down there, that's Oak Bluffs, and that the scene, that's where it all starts down there, where you had a black lab pippet, and just vanishes, and then the lady's name was Susan. I did a signing with her down at a shark tournament last year down in Tampa. There was um, Susan G down in that area. That's where she gets taken down or under that is. And then it was funny, as I was saying, Susan did a signing in New York a couple, like two years ago, and they field and streamed the magazine and said, oh, we have a, a signing down in Florida at a shark tournament. We want two people that would die eaten by a shark to sign pictures there. So. They said they had Susan, so I said, oh, I'll do it, why not? So we <laughs> met up down in Tampa last July, and signing pictures, because we were both eaten by sharks. But filming the movie, this is the scene where I get eaten. If you remember the scene where you're looking up in the dunes here, and they had all those little beach houses, and they looked pretty good. And if you went on the other side, up in the grass, and looked on the other side of those nice little beach houses, it was just plywood with two by fours holding it up. They were all fake, but it looked good <laughs> in the front. And this is um, right here on this beach where uh, Spielberg, one of his early movies, he wanted to do it all right. So every little thing, he was, you know, that cold water, we had to do it a few times. But this is where Brody, he was sitting right up on the beach here. And that kid, Chris Rebello, him and the little Jay Mello, the two kids, his two kids on the beach, and almost everyone else on the beach, you kind of knew them. They're just all extras from the island. So like my brother, everyone's in that. And this is where I go up to my mother, and Lee Fierro, what's her name? She was a sweetie. I'll tell you a story about her in a little bit, but 
that's where I go up to Leafy Arrow and St. Mont, and I go back in the water, and oh, your fingers are pruned. And unfortunately, she lets me go back in because I just take the raft down to the water here, and that's where you start hearing the derna, derna, and when you hear that, it's not good news. <laughs> but it was funny because, you know, people were like, are you afraid of the shark filming it? No, it's afraid of going in this water in May here. You freeze your little 12 year old, you know what, off. So you swim out <laughs> on the raft, and Spielberg was like, see the boats over here? Yeah. It's a little closer yeah. than those boats were. He goes, swim out, and there was a machine like, Size of a barrel under the water. You couldn't see it was like right near the top of the water. And he says, swim out to this thing now. And when you get there, we'll say cut. So get on my little raft, swim out, and they say cut. And then he goes, okay, now we have a half a raft. Look just the same thing. Put it over this machine full of blood, this big barrel. And he says, now you're gonna line on top of it. And when you line on top of it, We'll start rolling the film again, and then the, the blood's going to go fly, and I'm lying on top of this thing, and I was like, we try it. The first time, bam, blood's all over you, just covered in blood. And all of a sudden, I go into water, hold my breath, trying to do it as long as I could, and finally, freezing cold, swim ashore. It's like, okay, are we all set? And Spielberg was like, no, your arm came out of the water. We're going to have to do it again. And oh, no. all my friends are freezing cold. On the oh beach. no! And since I had to join SAG Screen Actors Guild, I went up to a nice warm dressing room, stayed dry during my mess up, and seven hours later we tried again. The second time, Spielberg's like, "Ah, oh, your arm, your leg was up," and we tried it like it took five days, and finally he said, "This time we have two guys in wetsuits, and when that thing blows up." It's gonna, when the blood's shooting up in the air, they're gonna grab, each one's gonna grab one leg, lift you in and out of the water, and then pull you under and give you air. You got some air tracks under there. So on day five, they finally got two guys. That's why when you see the movie, you see me going up and down. Two guys lifting me up and down. So the water's not too deep out there. And finally, we got a day five, it was done. And earlier in the scene, it's like, there's a little parade before I died, and I just moved down here, and they, the Eggertown Boys and Girls Club, they had a drum and bugle. I played the drums, and basically, at first, Spielberg wasn't going to let me be in that scene, because, oh, you died, and it's like, oh, come on, and he finally said, yeah, well, you're not dead yet, when we that part, so I you see the movie, you can see a little kid with long hair, with hair, I don't have one now, banging on the drums, and so I was in that part, too, but it was fun making it. And then after five days, you know, you used to do a lot of other things. It's like that shark down in Eggertown that way. That's where um, they had a, that shark hanging up. And they drove that thing all the way up from Florida. And back in the 70s, they didn't put it on the plane and keep it nice and cold and fresh. It was in the back of a pickup truck. And you could smell that shark all over the whole town. It just stunk so bad. Where the kid, the boy's gonna spill out all over the dock. Right around in Eggertown, they have a yacht club and they have this big warehouse where they put boats and stuff in the winter. And we were little kids, so it's like we lived just down the street from it. So, you know, we walked down the sign up to be in the movie, and then we, at nighttime, you take a flashlight and go over to the warehouse where they, the three sharks, you had the right side looked like a shark, and the other side of that one was all mechanics. And then you have the left side that looks like the left side of the shark, and the other side of that one was all mechanics, and then the top and the bottom was all mechanics. We used to break in at nighttime, you know, no video cameras that time in the 70s, and climb all over the shark. So they came back and did Jaws 2 down here. We all signed up again to be in that one, and they got to my part, and they're like, they go, wait a minute, you can't be in this thing. And it's like, oh, why not? They go, you died in the first movie. And so basically they wouldn't let me be and then I walked away all depressed. I'm walking over towards the bridge now. It's a little windy. I might have to go back. I'll just turn point down to the bridge. Let's see, can we see that bridge down here? Oh yeah. wow. So basically it's like, oh, that's where the shark goes through. And someone else that was in the movie, that's I think the only other one that's on the island now is those two kids with the fake fin. 
yeah. and they, they kind of point and say, no, oh, he made me do it. And the older one, he's he's one of the Edgar Town cops on the island now. So just to get even, he, he sends them over to the war club and rest. When you get these jaws torn, say, oh, that's where Alex Pender is. And it's like, okay, see that cop over there? There's the kid with the fake pen. So payback once in a while. But one time in the restaurant, I saw two ladies walk in, and it's like, oh, damn, that's Lee Farrow, my mother in the movie. And I had not seen her in years. And so it's like I told the waitress, I said, hey, I got this table and went out with a little pad. Okay, ladies, what can I get for you? And she recognized me, but she knew I was just BSing her because and her friend didn't know me. And a couple other tables were in there. And I go, I'm going to ask you a really personal question. It's a little odd. Tell me to go away if it's too strange. And she went right along. She's like, oh, what? And her friend looks at me like I'm strange. It's like, and then all of a sudden she goes, well, what question do you have? I go, do you believe in reincarnation? Because I think I died years ago, and you look like my mother of my previous life. And her friend then looked at me like I was crazy. At another table, he was turned and was listening to me, and she's like, oh, my God, I had a son that died back in the 70s. And then all of a sudden, her friend looks at her like, what? And then the other table heard it. She goes, How, how'd you die? And then she gets up. She goes, my son was killed in the ocean. I go, I think I was out in the ocean where I died, too, back in the 70s. And she's like, how'd you die in the ocean? I go, I think I was killed by an animal. She goes, was it a fish? What kind of I go, I think I was eaten. She goes, was it a shark? I go, that might be it. And she goes, Oh my God, you're my son. And she gets up and hugs me. And then her friend's about to have a heart attack. And she goes, hey, we were in that movie years ago together. And she, that's where her friend was like almost, I thought she was going to go have to change something. And she was like, and Lee Fierro was like, oh, my son died that year. It's like, it was just funny because she was a sweetie. And one time we went down to a beach and did an interview. And it's funny because they were asking her, they said, so, Filming the movie for years, people would ask her to slap them in the face. Like, so basically, she said for 10 years she would do it, and she goes, I won't do it anymore. And then I go, oh, excuse me, and the guy behind the camera was laughing. He's like shaking his head. Yeah, I go, come on, you and my mother slapped me once. And she goes, fine. I go, come on, mom, hit me once. And so she gave me a little slap. I go, no, like in the movie, and she got me good. What was Lee's kind of perspective of making the film? She was more like, even she just left the island a couple of years ago, and she they have these little plays that, you know, play studios, and she was in a play every year, and that's what she did for years. So when they interviewed her, she went right down, not just to be an extra like most people. She wanted a speaking part. And so she has a, some good lines in there. She's... She's a real actress, but she did live on the island. Like Susan, the lady that dies before me, she flew in from California. And it's just funny because she said she was hurting bad for a while because you see her get dragged around. They had ropes connected to her when the yeah. shark supposedly had her and then yanked her back and forth. So I never knew that part. It's just little things like that over the years, you know, doing some of these signings, you, you learn more about it because people that knew these other stories like the shorts that I was wearing I guess I found out that because uh, Dreyfus is at one of these signings he was telling me that the shorts I had were red and that was not supposed to be in the movie I guess the whole thing yeah. um, the writers Spielberg everyone's like they want no red clothing because of the blood and jaws and all that that they, they so nothing was supposed to be red and they say how did my shorts end up being red I guess they couldn't find another pair, so that's like the only red article of clothing in the movie, I guess. Do you still have those swim trunks? No, a lot of you get some crazy people that they would ask that question. Do you save those? It's like, no, I don't even know what happened to them. And but you get some people will come in with like I told you the raft or little pieces of the movie. This one guy came in the other day and he had a piece of the boat. And it's like, he probably bought it on the internet. It wasn't even real, but he just wanted me to sign it. And it's, so it's like, oh, okay. But, and then you get people that come in, just one big Harley Davidson rider. The wait's just like, oh, he wants to show you something. And I go over and he pulls off the sleeve. And this big guy, he's like, the whole Jaws logo is tattooed on his arm. And 
the London, it looked really good. And then underneath, Richard Dreyfus, Robert Shaw, Roy Schneider. And then you get down near the elbow. My name was on the guy's arm. He's like, oh, that's uh, interesting. It's like, <laughs> but, you know, other people just, you know, this one guy down at the, the Wharf Pub, we, they have te- Wharf T-shirts, you know, pub T-shirts, Martha's Vineyard. Everyone wants those kind of things. And years ago, we made one that it says the Alex Kittner still alive at the wharf. So the front had the bar and everything. And the back had a kid on a raft and the whole jaws right there about to eat them. And last year, he comes in. I updated it because we have a. I'm going to. Let me show you. You'll like it. I updated it. And I said, okay, let's see it. And, and this one it was funny because I go, this looks more like it because the kid on the raft was missing a lot of hair. I go, yes, it's updated already. This kid on the raft here only has a little hair. It's like, okay. And he goes, and this time I'm going to put it on Facebook. I go, if you put this on Facebook, I'm telling you, I'm not going to I'm not gonna mail these things anywhere. I'll sign them here and you have to go mail them. He goes, that's fine because on Martha's Vineyard, the post office has one person in there and you have like 100 people waiting. It takes forever. And he put it on Facebook last fall and like, the first day, he's like, okay, I'm signing, oh, for the dead Alex Kinder, and the, so I'm signing a shirt, and here you go, one in Germany, one in Denmark, two in England, it's like, and he would have to go mail them. There's a shark tournament, I'm not sure if you ever heard of Block Island, and it's an island down off of Connecticut, you know, mm-hmm. near New York, and they have a shark tournament every year, and Martha's Vineyard, Egertown's a fancy town, the boats down there are million dollar boats in the summer. And these people came in. We were playing poker that one night. And the waitress was like, oh, the guys want a couple of those shirts signed. Because they were in a shirt. And they want Alex Kittner to sign it. So I went down. And they ended up getting like 15 shirts. And they're like 20 bucks and 15 for the autograph. And they paid the whole thing. And he's like, oh, here, thank you so much. And he starts handing me some money. I go, no, you paid for the T-shirts. You paid all that. You're all set. He's like, no, you came down. Thank you so much. And. Finally, I said, okay. I didn't even look. I just walked in the kitchen. It's like 100, 200, 3. He gave me 800 bucks extra just to sign. Wow. Right. Holy oh. Cool. But it's, you know, you got people that come in from all over the world. That's why I finally ended up getting on um, Cameo because people would come in the restaurant and almost be, we came all the way down from England to see where they filmed it. And they go, yeah, he's not here today. He won't, he went off island. He's, so they finally said, just sign up with this thing. So I finally did it. And, you know, right around Father's Day, it was crazy because they they say, OK, if you agree to do it with him one day, they usually give you three days to do it. Uh, you'll get more. I just started doing it last four, fall. And I go, ah, eh, fine. I, and you usually get like four or five a week. And that time, Thursday, I mean, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday before Father's Day, you agree to do it within a day. I had... 29 of them that in four days is like oh there are some jaws and some of those things are crazy because you know most of them is like oh wish my father a happy birthday it's from he's a great jaws fan or other ones this one lady is like oh it's her son's birthday he's a big jaws fan he's going to be one tomorrow can you wish him happy? it's like a big jaws fan he's going to be one <laughs> but you get some strange ones and this thing's out of chicago and they said you don't have to answer all of them because i got one last couple of months ago, I was like, our father was a big Jaws fan, and he really, we hate to say it, but he died watching the movie Jaws, and can you send your regret? It's like, what? It's like, he, he's a Jaws fan, and he died watching the movie, so it's like, ah, what the hell, I'll give it a try. I hope, Hopefully, I don't offend him, so I went right down there on the beach, and I said, oh, I hear your father was a big Jaws fan. We have something in common. This is the dead Alex Kendner. He died watching me die. So, you know, he, he died on the couch. I died out in the cold water. I was covered in blood, too. So I guess, I don't know. But we both died doing the same thing. Almost. And then they, the next day, I'm thinking, oh, they're not going to like that. And it's like, five stars. Thank you so much. That was great. It's, like, oh, wow. it's, like, it's just, it's it's just unreal, cool. some of those things. I thought they were going to be a little offended. Oh, we died the same, doing the same thing pretty much. Watching. Watching the movie and filming the movie. Now, Jeffrey, how can people find you on Cameo? Do a little plug for yourself on the show here. Oh, have you heard of Cameo? Yeah. You just go in there and either hit, I really don't, you hit Jaws or you just write, say Jeff Voorhees or Alex Kinder and 
my name pops up, but it's funny because, you know, anything from Father's Day, birthdays, anniversary, like the one earlier was like, my sister's a big Jaws fan. They named their dog, their first dog name was um, Brody, and then Brody died. Now they have Quinn. They named all the dogs that. It's like, okay, and they just, they love it because they go, oh, well, Pippet died down here, and Quinn, and those guys... You know, it's just people really like that because they like it because I do it right from the beach where I died from. Or if it's too cold, you know, that little ferry boat that goes across where there, Brody was saying, um, uh, he had a little beaches clothes sign on the in his car, right? Yeah, and down there, there's not as much wind that and our restaurant's right outside there. So if it's real cold or real windy, I'll go down on that dock and say, okay, here's that little ferry that goes back and forth. That's Chappaquiddick over there, and that's where they filmed that scene. And right on the other side of that ferry is where the shark was hanging up, where it stunk so bad, where the kid the boy is going to spill out all over the dock. Yeah. What's the name of your restaurant, by the way? The Wharf Pub. The Wharf Pub in, on Amity, Martha's Vineyard. I get to help Mass. It's and a lot of scenes, because, like, the Amity Bank, that's a bank right across the street from us, and they still have the Amity, they have it on the wall, and say it says Amity Bank that they use in the movie, and just lots of little things. People on some of these tours, they know more than, it's unreal what they know. Oh, the scene where they filmed, it was like, oh, the sheriff's office, it's some little building back, and they know where all these, and they would go knock on doors, can we film, just take a picture of where Brody's office was. It's like they know every little detail about that movie. Jeff, we here at the Con Guy, we're called the Con Guy because we cover that sort of thing as well. Do you have, in the past, obviously not right now, but in the past, have you done a lot of comic book conventions and pop culture conventions? Oh, I just, you know, Steven, and I just, when I got to know him, I tell him I'll do a few of those. But like the signings and stuff, I used to always hide from all that or mm. people come in and, oh, does he work? It's like, I just, and over the last, over the last seven years or so, it's like, I'll sign pictures. I'll do that a few times a year. Cause you know, it's fun. It's like, you know, I was supposed to be up in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. They canceled that. North Carolina was supposed to be at next week. I think they, they canceled that cause they never got back to me. They fly you down there. There's one over in um, England in November. I doubt they're going to let any U.S. citizen in over there in November. So, you know, it's just fun. They they fly you there. You don't bring – you don't have to get pictures or anything. They have all that there. And you make a nice – a fair amount just to get flown somewhere, sign some photos. Last year in Massachusetts here, in Central Mass, is a place called Worcester. And here in New England, this on Martha's Vineyard, Amity Island here, that's the grand finale, Columbus Day, then this season. On this island, in the winter, there's 15,500 on the island. And in the summer, there's 365,000, not including day trippers. Oh, wow. It's a madhouse. And like Columbus Day, it's like the last one. There's weddings, there's people are closing up their houses, there's all the restaurants and everything are still open. And I always tell people September and October, half the crowds here and everything's open. But Columbus Day weekend, they got me to do a signing in Central Mass. It's called Worcester. I'm not sure if you heard of that. Yeah. And they give you a backstage passes. They had bands and stuff. So it was fun. You go backstage to some of these bands and the younger band. I didn't know the names of any of them, but <laughs> it was so windy down on Martha's Vineyard here. And there's no flight from the vineyard up there. So I told them I would drive. And it's like a two hour drive from the boat. So. I had reservations to leave on Thursday. The signing was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it was so windy starting Wednesday. And this is a busy island. There's wedding groups. People are so mad. The boat stopped running on Wednesday. And the signing was Friday. So I go up there Thursday. I didn't have a reservation to get a stamp on. The boat didn't run Thursday. And then finally, Friday, the boat didn't run. And I called these people. I go, you know, you want me to still come up to this thing? I already missed the day. They're like, we got so many people waiting. If you can get off, it's like... They were telling people, they go, oh, Al, he tried to swim over on his raft, but it was too windy. <laughs> and so basically, I finally got up there on Saturday for two days of the signing. And was at the table, there, there were so many people waiting. The first guy there comes up and he got his pitch. He's like, 
I've been waiting so long. I go, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm an hour too late because I was supposed to, it started at 10. I didn't get there until noon on that day. He goes, no, I got here yesterday and you weren't here. I go, yeah, I'm sorry. It was too windy. He goes, well, you got to stay another day. He goes, no, the hotel we had for one day and it was booked the next night. So we had to sleep in our car last night to get a picture. It's like, oh my God, people, they slept in the car just to get a photo signed of someone that's in a movie for what, a minute or two. But wow. like the ladies from Halloween and some of these signings, like the one in New York, I see a lot of these people in the Halloween signings because horror movies and stuff. And they, they kind of laugh. They go, you get more people at your table and you're in that movie for a minute or two. We're real actresses and you get more people over there. It's like, I, we just laugh about it. It's like, it's, <laughs> if you see in the movie, I, I'm only in it a little, but you get some Jaws fanatics. And that is on Facebook. It's odd because. I didn't know much about it on there. It's, I guess you're only allowed 5,000 people on your Facebook and th that's been filled for over a year now. So no one else can get on it. Like, <laughs> hey, Jeffrey, I've, I've got a question. You say that you kind of avoided the, the fandom for a while and you just like in the past six, seven years have come back to it. Um, can I ask you why you were avoiding it? Uh, Yes, I mean, you would get tons of mail. Can you sign this and mail it back? And and living on an island, it's busy in the summer. I didn't want to deal with people who would come in with rafts. And can you sign? It's like, and then after a while, especially when the computer started, you couldn't hide anymore. People knew where you work. They know where you live. And then finally, after they got me to do a couple of the signings, it's like, yeah, you make, you know, Eight ten thousand bucks on a signing. They fly you there. They have the photos. You eat, drink, and be merry. For I'll do this a little bit more. And then, like on the island here, you know, it's fun. You know, I you do it. I'm running my dogs out on this beach anyway in the morning. I'll do a cameo down here. And you know, a lot of people are real jaws for addicts. And you know, you just see the smiles. It's like, okay, why not? I'll I'll be a nice person. <laughs> Because now, now, when you were a kid, after you did the movie and just the general feel of the area, were people afraid to go in the water? You're doing the scene, make you more freaked out to go in the ocean? Uh, that's, you talk to people, almost that, so many people you either sign things or they just come in to say hello. They say they couldn't swim. For, some say they still can't swim in the ocean because of it. And right over here across the, the bridge on the other side of this little canal, the water's real shallow over there. And my brother, they have a small boat. They live over on the other side of the island. And we would take his kids, you know, 12, 13-year-old kids around your anchor over here and then swim and jump off the bridge like these people are doing. And then they finally let the kids watch the movie like when they were 12. And and for years, they come down here, you swim the shore, jump off the bridge. And then the year they saw the movie... The, the youngest one, he's like, Colton, he's like, I'm not, I'm not going in there. He's like, well, come on, let's go. Let's swim ashore. He goes, no, this is where you got eaten by the shark. It's like, I go, I wasn't eaten by this shark. They go, this is where you died. It's like, it's a movie. It's like, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't go in the water here for a few years. Wow. Oh, wow. Now, there was a real great white spotted there, and there was an actual attack here the past year or two, wasn't there? Yeah, last year there was an attack over on Cape Cod, and Facebook, I'm not sure if you know much about that, but you get some real for that. They have these Jaws groups, and some of them are, you just, it'd be like, they said the first one to die on in this area in like 100 years, and all of a sudden, wait, Alex Kittner died here 45 years ago, and all that, <laughs> but it's just, some of these, it'd be crazy that, like, oh, well, he died before that, it's like, and this guy actually died over on the Cape. And, but I guess um, just the other day up in Maine, it happened. So an attack by a great white up there and, you know, the colder water, because the sharks, they're pretty much, there's a lot of them on the other side on Cape Cod, because wherever you find a lot of seals, those sharks are around the seals. That's like their delay. That's a, a good meal, not some, you know, 60 pound, 12 year old on a raft. They like those seals. <laughs> Yeah, right. Has it affected them? Like the the recent shark attacks? Um, what what's the feeling there? Have people been affected by it? I gotta have to say no. You see, 
There's shark attacks down in Florida and stuff, and people still go in the water. And here, when they have a sighting like at on the other side of the island, it's like people saw a shark, and you go down there because I'll run some dogs in the morning, and the it's packed. It's people are still going out there. It's you know you get some people that, as I said, that even watching the movie they wouldn't go in there. But even after a real attack right on the other side of the I mean, you can see Cape Cod on the other side of the water here, and I you never see people not going in, even if they, they have warning signs on rip currents with, like, a hurricane's coming up here now, and people still swim with that. You know, you're going to get dragged out there, or manta rays, and a lot of these other, and they put warning signs up, but, well, it's just like wear a mask for the coronavirus. People don't, most of them, <laughs> a lot of them won't listen to any of that. <laughs> So, hey, Jeffrey, uh, Luke has five we, – we're going to do something we call lightning round, where Luke has these five questions he's going to ask you and see if we can get the – Okay. All right. Luke, you ready? All right. Here we go. Just – and you can have more than one answer if you want. But uh, first question, question number one, uh, favorite character in Jaws? I'll have to go with – oh. Richard Dreyfus, he was nice. <laughs> Love it. All right. Question number two: Favorite line from the film? I'm gonna have to say the Kenta boy is gonna spill all over the docks. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. A great one. Uh, third question: uh, Favorite scene? Oh, you know, I'm gonna have to go right down. With where I was eating, I know everybody in that, when you're watching that scene, there's so many extras, you point out, oh, there's my brother, there's a friend, there's that little, the sheriff's kid. You knew everyone in that scene. Nice. Awesome. And we, we kind of talked about this before, but uh, question number four, do you own any props or have any, like, Jaws merch? Uh, no, I just do the pictures, the signings. If I had known it'd be such a big thing, I would have saved all that stuff. But yeah, you know, and it's unreal what some people pay for that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, question number five: What was what was your favorite day or memory of filming the movie? Uh, making it, or just the movie overall? Uh, hey. Making it. I I gotta say it was, you know, it was fun. We lived right in town. Going in there at nighttime with the flashlight and climbing all over Bruce, the mechanical shark. It just right where you know you were eating, this thing's gonna eat me, and I'm climbing all over this thing at nighttime. It was fun. <laughs> awesome. What baseball games with Richard Dreyfus, Roy Scheider, and Robert Shaw, the drunk guy over in the corner, and just uh, just going over and abusing him a little was fun too, because he did not want kids around him. <laughs> no. Ben and Luke, do you guys have any of uh, Kind of final questions before we, Jeffrey, go walk in the dogs. <laughs> ben, you want to go first? Well, I'm trying to think what we haven't really covered yet. Um, I, I mentioned uh, Jeffrey earlier. We have all these questions that we were going to ask, and then as as Jeff just kept telling stories, I was just taking off all these questions that he was answering. Um, but. Uh, yeah, no, I, I did find it interesting that that Jeff brought that you brought it up, Jeff. We did talk to Joe Alves, who was the production designer and the second unit director for Jaws, and he made a very strong point about saying we told them no red, we don't want any red clothing in the in the movie, and then your shirt ended up being red. Um, so that, that is interesting because he said you know, it was just some costume designer that picked those shorts. But it sounds like that was the only option on the rack at the time. Yeah, no, I, I never knew about that until doing one of these signings, and he was talking about that, too. It's like, oh, I, so I'm the only one with red in it, so you have to watch the movie once in a while. Yeah, no one has red on. I'm the only one that had some red ones. Well, I was covered in red blood eventually, but and it's just funny because when it's on TV, my brother lives over in Spain, and you still get royalty, so you get a little text. Good news, you just died on TV over here, and you get a little it's like, it, and then after some of these signing T-shirts or photos or people's collarbones, it's right. Laugh and say, "Well, it pays to die." 
Exactly. Now there's a shot that's in particular books, like a photo of like a dummy of you in the shark's mouth. Now, had they have wanted to film you with the actual shark, do you think you would have done it? Well, they tried that a couple times, I guess. And I never knew this until the person that made the shark, I did a sign here too, and they were saying how they, they, you know, this is back in the 70s before, like, before I think the real horror movies then were Godzilla, King Kong, and you get some mechanical thing pounding on his chest. Nowadays, you see little blood flying everywhere, body birds flying, but back then, they had a little dummy. There's um, one of these photos I signed. It's a dummy that kind of looks like me. And that just got out. And the shark, Bruce, it comes up and it grabs it. And body parts are flying everywhere. And it, they said this is a little too hardcore for the, you know, the mid for to be on screen. So that's why they finally said we can't do that. That's where they got the guys in wetsuits to lift me up and down. So you don't really see the actual shark pieces flying and everything but i mean it's bad and just lots of little things you know filming it something i learned from a lot of these is a lot of jaws fan clubs and stuff and they all like this last year 140 of them came down it's like it's unreal they just all want to come down they come in groups and something they say a lot of the cameos now like this morning it was someone's birthday so something they they got me going on if i'm doing one it's like Happy birthday, Karen. Have a jawsome birthday. It's like, oh, jawsome birthday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeffrey, um, here we are uh, 45 years from the first summer that Jaws was in theaters, and it has become perhaps like the epitome, the, the grand summer blockbuster of all time. People point to it. It's the movie that started summer blockbusters. What do you think it is? What is it about this movie that has made it such an enduring classic for 45 years? No, that's, is it because it was one of the first horror movies? I mean, they almost, they were getting well over the budget. They almost stopped doing it. It wasn't going to come out, but it's unreal. Over the years, you get a couple people coming down, but like maybe after the, the internet and stuff got going, but... It's unreal. You get people, they have Jaws tours going on down here. People come down just for that. Or these, I got a, I would get messages. Oh, we're, we're from England. We've been saving up. We want to come over. They come from all over Europe just to see where they filmed the movie. And like last year, this one guy that does the tours, I was waiting for a, a cab to pick me up because they were going to drive me to the airport to do the signing with Susan down in Tampa at a shark tournament. And there were like 20 people. He's like, oh, here's the Alex Kinder. And he starts asking me questions. I go, I'll talk as long as until this cab gets here. And, you know, I'm in the movie for a minute, but it's just unreal how many, how many people just to talk to someone that was in the movie for two minutes and says a couple lines. Well, I can say, I, I think I'm speaking on behalf of all of us. Just talking with you today has been such an honor. Um, and you may have only been in that movie for one minute, but we have seen that one minute hundreds of times, and it has la it's a lasting impression. Little yellow rafts went om almost went out of business because of that one scene. <laughs> I tell you what. Well, it's but, funny because uh, people would come in with those yellow rafts and want them signed, and they would come in with shorts or just to get them signed. And the guy that run the restaurant with, he actually was in California making, he was in well, like 10 movies, a real actor. And people would come in and say, oh, it's Jeff Worries here. And he's like, no, he's not here today. But you want me to sign something? I was in this movie. He starts naming all the movies. And that kid, people like their heads go down. Uh, no. And they just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like, and he's like, you get more Jaws fanatics. And you're not even an actor. And I'm a real actor. And no one's, I don't get cameos and do all that <laughs> hey luke and ben what do you guys think uh, um we, we got a good show here yeah i'd just love to if we could maybe get just one more kind of question just uh one more time like what what it was like working with uh steven spielberg as a director a young director no it was fun because you know you're 12 years old you don't know it's one of his first movies and you never knew he was going to become such a big hit and just, but you could tell it was one of his first ones because 
every little detail. He was making you do it over and over. That's why I was telling you, like, your arm came out of the water a little, and that water's freezing. He would say, you have to do it again. And it would take eight hours for all the blood to clear out. Every little scene where he was just, everything had to be right on. And you laugh about it now and then, but then you look back and say, wait, okay, Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost, you know, the guy's made some movies, so, and that's one of his starting points. So I think that's pretty cool where you're part of the beginning of his, uh, you know, big movie career, making them, that is. Yeah. Now, did he talk so much, on, like, Offset? Like, did he kind of hang out and play sports and stuff like the other guys? Yeah, he'd be there all the time. They, they were all really nice, except for one older drunk guy who was just like in the movies, but the rest of them, and he was the one that would get those baseball games going and stuff because he wanted, you know, be nice and, you know, every little thing. And it's just funny because even though they would tell him one thing, if, you know that little parade where you they're going up the street before I died. Um, they kept telling him that roads one way, it goes the other way. But he wanted to do it right, and it makes sense because you come around a corner there. And but watching it, if you know the island, it's like wait a minute, this the traffic's going the wrong way, and that's how he wanted it. Since you know Spielberg, one of his first movies, or you know this island, they were having a tough time getting it done in time because it gets expensive. And he would always, Spielberg would have cookouts and baseball games. And Richard Dreyfuss, they, they would all be down there, Roy Schneider and those guys. And they'd be out there with the kids playing baseball. You're having a burger they're cooking. And then you look over far away because it was like a baseball field. You see the tennis courts further away. It's like, oh, there's Robert Shaw. And it's like, oh, i got to run over and say hello to him. And you get a little closer. It's like, what's that smell? I, it's like you smell booze. The guy, it's like one in the afternoon. You could tell he was a little intoxicated right then. And you run over, hey, how's it going? And he's like, ah, get away from me, you little, I, I'm not going to say it on air. It starts with an F. And get away from me, you little shit. So basically, we knew he just wanted nothing to do with all these little kids running up saying hello. And so and that just got, that, that was kind of putting fuel on a fire because we knew that got him upset so it's a small island so you go down there and watch him filming scenes all over the place and anytime you would see him you would have to run over and just say how's it going hey, hey. <laughs> the <piss> him off. <laughs> Jeffrey are you involved at all with the Orca 3 restoration project yeah the people that are running that they keep getting a hold of me and that's going to get it they're going to have that together pretty soon. And they want me to go out on the cruise on it. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them, you know, they were showing me some pictures and stuff. And I said, you know, I, I would do that one. That's pretty cool, I think. So, and that's because, like, there's another one these, out of California. These, this one group, they have, it's like the orca. They have one of the sharks. And they have, oh, these mannequins that... They come to some of the signings, and I said I'd go out there and do it once. I'm not even sure. I just told them to get a hold of me, but some people, but the Orca one that you're talking about, that sounds like it It looks exactly like it. He was showing me some pictures, and it's like, yeah, I'll go for the cruise once. Yeah, yeah. We had, we talked with him earlier this week, and I think they started their fundraising, so that's going to be an exciting project. I, On behalf of myself, Jeffrey, I just want to say I have so enjoyed this, so thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'll let the other guys go ahead and go. Go ahead, Luke. Uh, yeah, it's it's been such an honor. Jaws is my favorite movie, and you know it just created this lifelong obsession with the movie and with just sharks in general. And um, I, we're just so glad to have you on. Well, see, I'm on it, and you're not hearing da 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Jeff, it has been just a pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, thank you so much for coming on our show, our humble little con guy show, and sharing your stories and your memories um, from Jaws and from the years after. Uh, and uh, oh, look at that best friend! <laughs> and the other what one's waiting to run. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go wash my dog's name. Is there a pivot? What's yeah, the dog's Jeff, name? That's a the big one. That's a Leia, and the old lady Maggie. Maggie. Oh, the Bernice Mountain Dog. All right. Okay. 
Yeah. Jeff, if people want to follow you on social media, can they find you online other than Cameo? Uh, Facebook, but that's full, I think they would say. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, there's another one that I just, I haven't got the photos yet. I told this guy, I don't even, I haven't really got all the, I just signed the papers. It's from Dallas, something in Texas. He sends me, he's going to send me up like 1,600 photos. They sell them. I just sign them and mail them from Amity Island. And they're like 40 bucks a whack. And, you know, he, they get 20% and I get the rest. So it's like just lots of little things. It's, you know, <laughs> it pays to die. <laughs> pays to, pays to die. die. When was the last time you saw Lee before she passed this year? I She was, I would see her like once a year just because it's a small island. And she was in plays and stuff. But three years ago she was getting so old like that signing on good morning america they had to help her down the beach and they finally out of michigan i believe it was where they put her in a senior home and of course that wasn't a good place with this coronavirus and that's what got her out there i guess that's a shame so but and like the other ones the oldest son of the sheriff his name was chris Rubello. he was a good friend we were the same age same class and stuff but he died, I think he was 40, and he had a heart attack, I mean. So, and it's, at some of these signings, since this is the 45th anniversary, uh, this year, they were telling me, the ones that I do the signings, when they go on, they're gonna try to get, there's, I guess they were saying there's only seven people still alive that were in the movie, and I, it's unreal. People know all the details, so like, they were going to get like four or five people to do the signing together this year. I said I would, but and then there was just the one of the ladies they do the signing to. She went pretty soon. You're going to be like the only one left. I was one of the first ones to die. <laughs> well, so the locals in the movie. Oh uh, yeah, it's a small island. So I just moved down here that year. So it's like. That's why, like, most of the people you know, they, they'll just send they send them down to the restaurant. They, uh, Jaws fanatics, they go, yeah, you go talk to Alex Kinder. He's down there. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, uh, Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show today. We really appreciate you being here. Um, folks, looking to get uh, a special message from Jeff on Cameo, uh, Jeffrey Voorhees. You can also look up Jaws or Alex Kintner. Uh, and he is on Facebook, although the group might be full, as we've been told. Jim, the con guy, where can people find you online? You guys can follow me at Jim Fry LA on Twitter. Again, Jeffrey, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Everyone have a great day now. Yeah, and Luke, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Cheese on Couch and also on the conguy.com. And I am old buddy Ben. You know, people always ask me, hey, Ben. Why are you drinking out of that red cup? Well, it's because whenever Ben Cleaver shows up, it's always a party. This has been the Con Guy podcast right here on that hashtag show network. As always brought to you by Neft Vodka. Please drink responsibly. Our guest today has been Jeffrey Voorhees, the kinder boy from Jaws. And uh, we've just had a delightful time talking to him today. Also good to see a fellow Tacoma driver. Or are you in a Tacoma? I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I drive it to Kuma too. So <laughs> thank you again so much. This has been the con guy. Have a good one, everybody. Bye bye. Good luck on your show. Everyone have a great one now. You too. Thanks. You too. Bye bye. Bye Thank you for watching today's episode. Hopefully, you enjoyed hearing about the behind the scenes of the death of Alex Kittner. Well, tomorrow we have another Jaws cast member. We have Jeffrey Kramer, who played Deputy Hendricks. So we are very excited to show you that. And then later this week, we have Carl Gottlieb and Greg Nicotero to close out. So hopefully you're as excited as we are and keep watching.